Yeah, well, let's, okay, let's jump in. Let's let's talk college basketball because that's obviously the thing for the next few weeks as we move forward. So you mentioned that some of the smaller conference tournaments are ongoing, which, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, you've got I, – I, I may be off by one or two. I think you out there in Vegas have every single conference tournament. Is every one of them happen in Vegas now or just a couple? How many? It's what, crazy. What's I didn't going really, on out there? I didn't really realize this because, you know, for forever I'm in a room in a, or in a sports book working – while all these people are coming to town and I'm like, you're here for what tournament? You're here for what tournament? The big West, the, the, the West coast conference, the, I think the big sky is here too. No, the big sky's not here. It's someone else. I can't remember, but yeah. It, it, oh, PAC 12, PAC 12 is a big one. They're all here. And it's just like round the clock. I, I actually, I took Kylie the other night to the West coast conference semifinal and watch Santa Clara lose to St. Mary's. It's a lot of fun. I got to be honest. It's fun to watch all this basketball. It's quick. That's it. You go to a game, it's, it's within two hours. It's, I love they're it. Get, they're getting four in, aren't they? West Coast Conference is getting four teams in the tournament. Are they? I think they are. I swear. I, I, I mean, uh, obviously, Gonzaga, or is it Gonzaga? I don't know which one it is. Zags. The Zags. Zags. So it's Gonzaga? Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Really? All right. All right. Here, come the, here come the YouTube comments. Listen, if we've said that <laughs> wrong, the YouTube comments are coming. So just go ahead and throw it out. If you're not sure, throw it out. Okay, so uh, here, Gonzaga go in. Take it away. St. Mary's in. San Francisco's got to be in, right? Yeah, San Francisco's in. I I'm think that's at, it, right? St. Mary's is that what I say, three? St. Mary, you said four, but four, three. You yeah, know. who's the who's it's, the fourth one? Who am I leaving out? Who got beat this out? It can't be Santa Clara, can it? No, BYU is going to be out. No, Santa Clara's out. Three teams in. Yeah, three teams okay. in. All right. All right. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Three teams. They should be thrilled, though. They should be thrilled. The Zags were interesting last night, laying seven in the first half, 13 and a half for the game, 13 for the game. It depended on when you got that number again. Yeah, tell first the people half, what it half, fell. First half cash fell yeah. 13, right? The game fell, fell 13. 13. Yeah, of course it did. 12 and a half was the consensus, like closing line and stuff. And there were some 13s, but it's amazing. Um, we always remember the ones, you know, that were that were close, right? That game falls close. The total wasn't close. It flew over. Um, but there's so many games and there's so many opportunities this week where the numbers are just off and crazy things happen. Be how if you're up three with five seconds to go, do you foul? Oh, that's a good question. We've been talking about this forever. When I was in the depart athletic departments, when I was out, it's uh, I've I've worked with Hall of Fame coaches that say absolutely yes. I've worked with Hall of Fame coaches that say absolutely no. And I found people that say it's situational and it depends. Where's the ball? How smart is your team to know not to foul? Because the, the, what scares coaches? What do we always talk about on here? Coaches want to limit mistakes more than they want to make great plays. So they get worried that their guys are going to yak it up somehow and the shooter's going to quit, get it up, and you're going to foul them. And now it's in the act of shooting and they get three. So I could argue either way. It's it's six one way, half dozen another. If you foul before the shot, inbound the ball and tackle the guy, it's two shots. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, just then you get an intentional and they get the ball. Well, and they you make don't one, make it. And then look guys like, you like, guys the like guy. us. Well, you're asking a lot here. I mean, they're basketball players. They're not actors. They're out there reacting. We got officials coming in. I don't even <laughs> did think you that's see, did you see, did. did you see the Chattanooga ending? Did you see the Chattanooga ending? It was I fantastic for basketball, okay, but they're up three. Yeah. And yeah. they don't foul. Furman gets a three pointer off to tie. You know, and then they play overtime, and Furman should have won. The purple – is it Paladins? Paladins. Oh, very good. Purple Paladins. Very score good. a bucket with four seconds to go, to go ahead two. And then Chattanooga mocks the mocks. Moccasins, mocks for short. There you go. So You're good. on fire today. It's so good. Listen, did a little research. I had to be ready for the show. Anyhow, they hit a shot to win it, okay? They would have won it in, in, in regulation. And again, the spread comes into play, whether they cover it or not. If you're laying one and a half, they wouldn't have. Okay. That's you didn't want them to foul, but then they end up winning money line. Anyway, it just drives me crazy because you see things in these games that you don't normally see, I think. And because it's March and it's spotlight conference championship week, and then the tournament it's, it draws eyeballs on it. I just think you foul. I mean, it, 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 the worst that can happen is you foul them shooting and you get the ball back 
and you got to win in overtime anyway. If you give the guys a shot to tie it, okay. I mean, so you get them a shot on a free right. throw line. Right. Just stop. Oh. Just stop. Because here's the flip side. Just stop. Because go back and watch the highlights of that guy. That guy's moving left as a right-handed shooter. He goes up from between the three-point line and half court. It was He's good going the way. wrong way. It was like the NC State in 83 shot, except he actually made it instead of <laughs> airballed it for Lorenzo Charles. Almost the same spot on the floor, the same look as Derek Wittenberg gave you. My man from the mocks goes up. Here's the thing. The shot went in, so we're talking about it. How come you didn't come on here and talk about the five examples where they didn't foul and that guy misses an impossible shot and coaches would tell you, go out and make that shot, man, because you're not doing that again. You didn't come on here and give me any of those examples. You want to talk about the one where the guy hit it. Now you just made me go on the other side. Now I've got to sit here and watch all these games. And every time they don't foul and it doesn't work, I'm going to have to send you stuff. Now you just made me have other homework. It, 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 happened the other, it happened the other night, St. Mary's in Santa Clara. St. Mary's didn't foul. They were up three. And they didn't foul, and the kid got all the way past half court and heaved it, and it hit off the rim and missed. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't matter. they so won by three. That. Santa Clara was getting four and a half and covered, so <laughs> we were happy. And and I had a debate with with Big Consig Kylie on the way home, going, "Would you foul? I should have. They should have fouled." And the St. Mary's people were like walking out, going, "Should he have fouled? I don't know if she's fouled." Like everybody was talking, or they won, and they're like already thinking about that instead of thinking about playing the Zags the next day and losing. So yeah, it's yeah, interesting. It's, it's fun because I think the conversation brings in a lot of people that aren't one normally basketball fans, you know, stories like sister Jean and Loyola Chicago and all these things. It, it's so much fun, but is it too fast? Like, do we not like you're, you can be gone in a day at the tournament. It's I've often said this again is to, to harken back as somebody that's worked in multiple athletic departments and been to these events. It's simultaneously the greatest and the worst. And it's the greatest because the wins and the, the, the survive in advance, whomever coined that. I don't know if that was Valvano speaking of NC State. I think it might have been Jim Valvano. Yeah, that, it's, it's the greatest phrase because that's exactly what it is. And you win and you, you exhale. We live for another day. And the challenge is what's really gut punch worthy. You get on the bus and head to the arena and you don't know if that's the final game. And for players, it's some of them, it's the final games of their lives. Right. And that's the, Ooh. that adds to the drama. You're hopping Man. on that bus, not knowing when it ends in football for the most part. I know we have the two, the 14 playoff now, but you, you kind of know when the end is basketball. It's just not. And it's so exhilarating when you're with the team. And I've been to one final four, as an athletic department member, there, there's nothing like it, man. I mean, when you're advancing on, it's awesome. But I'm going to tell you this. You talk about a gut punch loss. The elite eight is the round you do not want to lose in. I've often said, if mm. you can, if you can win the first two and get to the sweet 16, that's where you want to lose because you've got through the first weekend. So you get to celebrate, you get an extra four days back on your campus of celebration, but you lose in the sweet 16. You can play what if, but not like when it's elite eight. When you're Elite Eight and you're that close to a Final Four and you don't close it, I've been there, that's a hard one. That's the worst round to lose in. Oh, yeah, I guess so. And it's and it's funny because you're right. If you get to the second weekend, then it's almost viewed as a success, right? Yes, like you, for you, most you, teams, yes, yeah. Right. And then you lose that, that one step away, and immediately you're almost like, into the ether you're forgotten oh. about like like in in a bracket you're just another line through and then in the book oh they never existed you just grade it like the immediacy of the end is so different than anything else just like you said and then you're, you're that close to to glory i mean it's another week of talking about it it's two games where you're focused the entire thing is on you Man, that's crazy. So, that's I mean, what do you, when you look at it like now, you know, not in an athletic office, but as someone who's looking to make bets and stuff, what do you focus on? I mean, yeah, what do you look at when you look at this? So, let's go through a couple as a way to kind of illustrate that because I think this is really for hard the listeners enough. and the watchers of the show. You got to go back last week because didn't we unearth who the, who, who the, you know, champion could be basically? We did. We it did. was just it was one of those things where you did a process of elimination using your stats and analytics and our friends at VEASAN that, you know, did some work and we, we talked it through. 
we basically already laid it out. So I have no idea what the hell you're going to tell me today because well, I'm still trying to figure out quadrant one wins and all this stuff and who's getting in. I saw Lenardi at the game uh, on Tuesday. I was like, you know, hey, Joe, what is bracketology? I mean, that's a pretty cool name. But, like, seriously, how'd you come up with that bullshit? Because no one knows what it is. I don't know who gets in and who doesn't. So here, let's take it this way. Because we'll do – this is so matchup-based when you talk about NCAA tournament, but you're right. Go back and listen to last week's episode. We'll hit it again next week as we talk about the teams that that fit the parameters of the last 18, 19, 20 champions. There's a pretty Ooh. specific set of numbers that tell you who the champions should be in the majority of those years, like whatever that is, 95%. Let's look at conference tournaments for a second because futures aren't normally my thing. I'm not great at them. I don't love them but I've, I'm trying to play a few more. And I've done that for the, the NCAA tournament. We talked about that last week, but conference tournaments, man, they're goofy and hard. Oh. So what do you, what do you look for here? Walk me through from a book perspective. So let me give you a couple examples. First and foremost, you, you mentioned PAC 12 is out there. I, I think Arizona is fantastic. Now they didn't quite fall into our parameters last week because they have a first year head coach. One of the requirements is you have a head coach that's been at least to the sweet 16, Tommy Lloyd from Gonzaga in his first year at Arizona. They're loaded with dudes. I mean, they're tall. They, they've got length. They're athletic. They get up and down. They're fantastic. They're minus 120 to win the Pac-12 tournament. That's, yeah. I mean, that's tough when you start to get a minus price on a, on a tournament champ. Do you lay that with a team like Arizona? Now, conversely, so let's compare and contrast. Kentucky, who I think is really good. I already have an NCAA champion future on Kentucky. We've talked about the Oscar Shibway prop, rebound prop, which remind me, I got something for you on that. When you look at Kentucky, plus 190 to win the SEC. Now, I know the SEC is deep. And they're the, and they're the favorite, at plus, yeah, they're the favorite that, at plus yes. 190, and Arizona yes. is the favorite at minus 120. Okay. So to me, that's an attractive Kentucky price there. I like Kentucky anyway. I like that, and I get the competition. But what do you do with minus versus plus prices here in conference tournaments that are so tricky? So, I mean – when you make these numbers and it's crazy because these numbers are literally up for three days. Like that's it. You make a future market price up and then you put them up and you might leave them up through the first round because you almost know the results of all the first round games. It's one, it's number of games. I'm assuming the way the bracket is set. And again, this might be a wrong assumption. Arizona might have to play one less game. Do they get a double buy? There's these yeah. double buys and triple buys and all this. Other. Yes. Like Gonzaga yes. only had to show up for the Western West coast conference tournament play Monday and Tuesday. And they won the championship. Other teams had to play four games. They had to play two. So you kind of come up with the parlay price based on the higher seed winning. So it's kind of a math problem. And you kind of got to guess because if there's an upset, then that money line parlay price that you've worked out is completely out the window. And I say all the time that nobody knows squadoosh is the clean version, but we're not clean here. So sometimes I say, nobody knows shit. You have to know, the path. So you tell me Arizona less challengers in the Pac-12 than challengers for Kentucky in the SEC. That would be my immediate why the price is so different. Yeah, the pro I mean, the price tells you that, right? But let's look at this. So Stanford and Arizona playing today, Wednesday, the winner of that advances on to take care on Arizona in its first game. Arizona then would have the winner of Colorado – versus Oregon or Oregon State, whichever team wins that. That's potentially tough. If Oregon gets through there, you've got Arizona having to take on maybe an Arizona, probably an Arizona State team that that beat them, right, took them into overtime, and then potentially an Oregon. Then after that, on the other side of the bracket, RO, oh, hello to UCLA and USC, potentially. That's Some good basketball good. games there. That's pretty good. That's, yeah, so yeah. for mine, that's a, that's a stay away for me, I think, on an Arizona at one. At well, I don't think price. you can ever really lay a minus price on any team that has to play at least one competitive game because, I mean, you can, if your intention would be to just get to the championship game and then have a hedge opportunity where you could be. Arizona's not going to be a dog to anybody. OK, and Kentucky yeah. probably is not going to be a dog to anybody. But I mean, you know, say their number one player gets hurt. They're playing in Arkansas. They're playing Auburn. They're playing. I mean, what's a game with Kentucky and Auburn on a neutral court? That's almost a pick them, right? So you're not going to have an opportunity to maybe take the other side and get a middle 
or okay so let me let me ask you this so there there's i'm sorry to interrupt you there there's your or there's your um arizona path here's here's kentucky okay they they play the winner of alabama and alabama gets the winner of georgia vandy so let's say alabama let's move on the favorites here first so alabama advances so you got okay. kentucky alabama and we've talked about alabama on here before i mean i like kentucky obviously in that game but if alabama starts heating up from three they win that then they will get the winner of tennessee and maybe a mississippi state maybe so maybe a tennessee and then either an Auburn or Arkansas on the other side. Yeah, that's a tough path. Okay. Now, tough. see that, I think you can roll over and get better than plus 190, meaning just bet Kentucky to win for the unit on the money line in their first game. Whatever you win, you roll it over. You take, so if you bet 100 and they're two to one favorites, you win 50 bucks. You take the 150 and just bet them again on the money line, roll it over if they win again, because a game with, Kentucky, Alabama will be seven to eight point spread. I don't think it would be 10, but it would be seven to eight. Then against Tennessee, a little bit less, four, three and a half, four. And then against Auburn, I mean, literally two, two points or pick them. So you could roll money line, money line, money. That's a three game parlor. They got to win three games. That's a tough three games. And listen, you've been to these conference tourneys. Anything can happen in these things, right? Boy, they can. It's it's weird, but th- but this is also where you start to see the cream of the crop. And I'll have to find some numbers on this, but generally what you want, you know, you'll hear one of these good teams is going to go out early and you'll start the narrative. Well, they get a little rest. That's not the worst thing in the world. They're not wearing themselves out going to a title game, which turns out to be false. I mean, the teams you want entering March Madness are teams that have won their conference tournament. They're hot. Right. They're rolling. So keep an eye on that. I'll be interested to see if Kentucky – I mean, if I think Kentucky can win the national championship, I, I mean, Auburn's one of those teams too. So that one, I'm keeping an eye on that closely. If I have a plus 190 on on um, Kentucky, I'm just hoping at least to get to the finals, and then I can decide right. what to do at that point. So right? when you when you were at these things, is this the only time of year, maybe other than like a preseason or a Maui tournament, where they're playing three games in three days? This yeah, is other it, right? than the, uh, yeah, other than the preseason, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. does depth become more important in, in, in these times, like, you know, at least for the conference tourneys? Is, because I hear this all the time. This team's not deep. They only go seven deep in their rotation, you know, or this guy has no backup, and if he gets in foul trouble, then they're in trouble. Like, does that matter now more, more than it does during the regular season, just a regular stretch of games or no? I don't, I don't know that it does a ton at this level. Cause you just mentioned the number. I mean, it's not like any of these teams are serious contenders with five guys. That's where I'd start to get concerned. But when you're talking about seven guys, you know how co- coaches get anyway, even if they tend to play a lot, they, they shorten the bench as you get into this, right? Who can I trust? I'm going to try, yeah. I'm going to, you know, they're young guys. They're not old like us. They got, I'm, I'm not as worried about depth here. I'm, okay. I'm not. I'm not as worried right. about that. What else are you right. worried about? What else? Let, you got? Look at the ACC tournament for a second. I know huh. it's underway. I, I get that it's already started. Let's it's, talk about a minus price. Duke minus 125. Carolina six to one. Wake Forest 10 to one. Uh, Anybody there interested? They got the coach of the year and the player of the year in the league. Wake Forest, do you care? Um, No, I don't care about any of that. I care about the price. Now, I saw Duke lose in coach K's last home game on Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. That line was so inflated because of the situation. Does that loss at all carry over to this at all in your eyes? Great question. Great question. Because here's one of those things. I just talked about this on another show recently. I want to say yes. And I want to build you the case for a yes. And I think you can build a convincing case for a yes. But here's the other thing. Not only now are we trying to handicap 18 to 22 year olds, now we're trying to guess what they're thinking. And now we're trying to assume that all of those 18 to 22 year olds are thinking the same way. And that just doesn't happen. I think that's what people forget in these conference tournaments when you're trying to do this. And that's what makes it so difficult. Not every dirty little secret, not every one of these guys wants the season to continue on. Now, if, if you're if you're Duke and you're Carolina and you're Wake, that's I mean most of those guys want to keep playing, right? Right. But there's some games tonight, like the Big Twelve begins in a playing game. 
between the Mountaineers, West Virginia team that I, I cover most closely, I'm just telling you right now, there are guys on that team that have had a miserable, they've won 13, lost 13 to 15. They're looking around going, I mean, real, uh, is it time to be done here? Like there's some of that. And that's why you see teams all the time like, oh my God, they got beat by 25 in a conference tournament. So that narrative that you'll hear a lot of us sports <laughs> talk guys at, ah, they're motivated. That dude, they lost on Coach Case. I, I mean, man, I don't know. <laughs> then we're going to get to North Carolina, right? Duke didn't shake their hand. And my right. man gave him the, the, the Magic Johnson look away handshake. I, I mean, what are we doing, man? Come on. So now that said, give me a Duke North Carolina final. I'm signing up for that. Oh. I want to I, I watch a little we'll of that. Watch it. Let's go. Yeah. We'll 100% watch it. Those odds tell me that well one i to answer my own question i think it motivates him in a positive way yeah they lost coach it should. last game and it should they, they're going to go and play their best basketball this week like much better they just that thing got away from them and, and it was just a, a wave of emotion and and the kids from north carolina couldn't miss a shot the guy with the beard i don't even know what he's doing but he was making shots from all over the odds tell me that they are such a prohibitive favorite that no one else in the conference can beat them in a one gamer. Find that hard to believe. I think you can just pick the other team that's going to be in it if you can find your way to that. So if you want to take a shot, do that. I personally would not. I, I stay away from these things. The books don't like booking them because no one really bets them because the time shelf life of them is very short so you leave them up you put them up right away when you see the bracket you see the path and you go okay this team only has to play two games this team has to play three look at these early games you know these games are i mean you talked about the acc look at the games today one and a half nine and a half four and five are the point spreads for the acc games today okay there's one definitive favorite wake's going to beat boston college because boston college didn't they beat Pitt yesterday like yes Pitt, I don't know how you get to be the play-in game to the play-in to the, to, the, to the ACC, but that's bad basketball. Okay, that's it. So, what? Did I say something wrong? BC? No one listened to the show from BC. They're fine. It's all right. Your, your season's over today. It's over. Wake Forest is going to beat you and probably going to cover the spread. Anyhow, these conference tournament odds are fast, they're quick, and – they're not really bet. That's the other little dirty secret. Like you talk about kids want this season to end. The books want to put these up and take a couple of bets and then close them so we can get to the real thing. It's a nice dress rehearsal for next week. I get it. And I, I'd rather, especially as we get into these power five, power six, when you count the big East, I, I'd rather just try and play game by game. Now, like yes. here's an example. Did you happen to watch? Cause I was on this. The smaller conferences are different because you're going to get a team on its home court if it wins through. Yes. So like last night's last night's championship, Wagner and Bryant. Well, let's talk that? about that for a second. So a oh, couple things. Yes. So I had done I had done Bryant at plus one twenty five before the tournament. Number one seed, they're going to get through and play on their home courts. Okay, mm. I like that. I also was in on the four seed to kind of protect them a little bit more of a long shot. And they're both plus prices. So either way, I'm covered. I, I still make money. So I, I turn it on last night and I was thinking about hedging. Do I go in on Wagner? No, it wasn't a big enough bet to worry about. Let's just let it ride. And so I'm watching that game. And if you weren't watching it, I mean, Bryant was absolutely just blasting Wagner, like 40 to 12 or something early. And it's yeah. going on. So I've got it on and I'm watching and I'm doing other things, working on it. All of a sudden, I look up I'm like, what, what is happening? What is happening right now? Absolute melee in the stands. Because it's in one of those small gyms. The yep. fans are right on top of each other. Bryant's yep. jacked up. It got fan, like fight. Now players are trying to get into the stands to help their parents and their relatives and their friends. I mean, it was a mess. There was like a 25 or 30 minute delay while they sorted it out. Took both teams off the floor, tried to remove the visiting team's fans, restore order. But here's what's interesting from a betting perspective. So I'm watching that saying, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not in college athletics anymore because those poor people trying to trying to get that managed mm. but from a betting standpoint dave i'm going oh no oh no i'm on the favorite here what what happens are we going to have to replay this game are they going to cancel the game are they going to restart the game it got weird there for a while ends up finishing bryant win so the the cash happens but that was a weird 25 30 minutes there didn't know yeah, what was going to happen it's so um it's so different in those games because 
they the winner goes on and plays. The loser's done. Season's over. Done, I done. think you. I think you have to t- kind of take that into the handicap as you do games this week in conference tournaments, where the teams aren't playing for the season to end. Like when Duke plays North Carolina, they're both in, so they both know there's another game, and you'll hear that narrative too. And I think in the book it just becomes another game. Like you just kind of put it up. It's a neutral site game. Here's the number go. Cause you know, both teams are playing. I think the smaller conference games are unique because in the book, we're like, all right, these teams are playing for blood. They're playing for survival. They're playing to play another game and get to the big dance and then be a 28 point dog to somebody and go get destroyed, but they're still playing to move on. So you see it be different. That scene was weird. Um, I was watching it without sound and I was like, Oh no, what is happening right now? You don't ever see that unless it's at a home court. I mean, I saw opposing fan bases the other night doing opposite cheers and chants and things like that. And, you know, everybody comes school spirit to the fullest. They're dressed in their gear, head to toe. The game's over. Everybody kind of like, you know, high five, see you later wave or some of them, did other gestures, but I mean, it's quick, it's over. So it's fine. Um, That is what is in March. Everyone in the book is doing that from table to table, group to group. It is so much fun. The atmosphere in the book, you have many tournament games every couple hours. It's so much fun. All right. Last one. Then we're going to move on from basketball. We've got to get into some other stuff here. Yep. Big, big 12, big oh, 12. What a mess. I mean, Kansas, I, Kansas and Baylor, two to one, best odds. Texas Tech, plus 350. Texas, six to one. You want a piece of Texas? I don't, but do you? I, 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 it's one of those three teams are winning. Which one doesn't have to play the other two? Is Baylor on the opposite side of the bracket than Texas Tech? Yeah, I'll look at that. Um, Whoever has to play Texas Tech, whether it's Kansas or Baylor, I want the other one. That's the semifinal. Whoever one of whichever one of those gets Texas in the semi, if the bracket worked out, that's who I would bet to win it. But I mean, the Big Twelve has been an absolute like up down mess. You you the spreads will be low, the totals will be super low. Um, just I, this is just a I mean it's a grinder. Oh. So here you go. Texas plays Texas Tech in the opening round game for them, quarterfinal game. Okay, wow. and then That's the winner plays game. who? The winner advances on and plays Kansas or Oklahoma State. Okay, so Baylor's on the other side. Oh, wait, sorry, hold on. I'm looking at an old one here. Get it together. What are you doing? Get it together. See, this is part of the problem, too, in the book. you got to find the right information. <laughs> Give me the right well, number. With the right rotation right? number, damn it. Oh, these rotation numbers, man. It's They're a lifesaver, newbie. You did it. You came to Vegas and made a bet at a book. You you were very well prepared. You went up. I had to dig with me. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you got to be prepared when you come up and come to the counter. Okay, Dave, real quick on, and we'll move past this. We'll get into some NFL here, but Texas and Kansas are on the same side of the bracket. Baylor and Texas Tech on the other side, if that holds. Ooh. Ooh. So that, I tell you what. Give me, again, I know I'm biased in favor of the Big 12 because I watch it every night, but you give me that. If that's the semifinal that holds, if the one, two, three, and four seeds hold, my goodness, that's a good semifinal uh, Friday coming up there for that league. Kansas wins. Count. Ooh. Kansas Ooh. wins. Ooh. They have the easier semifinal game. I would say Kansas wins right now. Would and- you take them two to one, though, or are you just playing game by game? Um. If Kansas plays Baylor in the final, who's favored? Kansas. Close. Close, right? right? Do you think? Do you think or you think Baylor? Well, and again, you're, it'll depend basically how they a home, you're, you're basically a home game for Kansas, so is the right. deciding that's, factor. That's gonna that's gonna slide it in their direction. So I would um I mean you're getting two to one. I don't know if that's quite enough, but I um You'd have to work out the math. I don't know if there's one definitive way or the other. I think you're okay either way. I just think Kansas's spot feels better like they're going to be in that final as opposed to the other side. Last thing on the Big 12. I, I bet I can't get I can't get them right. 
I think Baylor's got to fall off at some point because they're still just fighting through injuries. We've talked about Jonathan Chemwa Chachua, who I think is really good every day. John, they call him what not What did playing. you say his name was? Jonathan Chemwa Chachua. Man, oh man, we did we did a name contest on Cash Considerations, and I'm a little bit upset that I did not have that in the entry. Chemwa Chachua? Say one more Chemua time. Chemwa Chachua. Chemwa Chachua. I think. Now, well, again, Baylor fans, <laughs> go ahead. I mean, I think I think I got it. Been working on it all season. And he's hurt. He's really good. So anyway, I can't get him right because I think Baylor's should start fading and they're not. They look excellent. I really like Kansas. And now Kansas is wobbly. I, I don't know what I'm doing in the I, baseball. Know. I can't get it right. It's 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 one of those times a year where you question. That's the other thing I think I tell people all the time. Just make your bets and live with the result. Like there's no questioning and taking it into the next game. You know how as as you played sports, you can get in your head. I mean, sure. like you can get in your head making plays during these couple of weeks of the NCAA tournament. You can make, you know, play in the morning and you're like, you see the result. And you're like, man, I thought I had that now. And I was just wrong. And now you're like, all right, well then the dog will win here. You know, I should go with this. And then the complete opposite happens. I've literally seen people's faces. They look like they've been through a 15 round fight with Tyson and it's only Friday afternoon of the first <laughs> round. They're like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. What do you think now? I mean, it's, it's hilarious, but yeah, it's a great time of year. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, click on another video right here on the screen. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.